background I'm very curious to know where you grew up and how was your childhood like um, how did you um, get into Bharatanatyam? Yeah so I grew up in Vancouver Canada on the west coast I'm in Toronto right now on the east coast um, I come from a mixed background uh, in terms of my uh, ethnicity so we're Guyanese um, both my parents are from Guyana and I have Indo-Caribbean background and Afro-Caribbean background so half and half. So I grew up in a heavily um, white and Asian uh, area. Okay, so you never really um, lived uh, or had any sort of childhood experience in Guyana, though, right? Oh, so I was born in, in Vancouver, right? Uh, so yeah, born and raised in Canada, um, in a very small town in Vancouver, one of the suburbs of Vancouver, very small, um, one high school there. Um, so I was with the same group of people from kindergarten, some of them from kindergarten all the way till uh, through university. Wow. I also went to university in Vancouver as well. So I have some friends that I've known for a very long time. Um, and it was great. The, like it, Vancouver itself is culturally diverse. The area I grew up in was not culturally diverse, but they did a really good job at the school of bringing in other um, whether it be art forms or traditions or whatever it may be from different places. So there was um, maybe a monthly concert that they would do every month where they would bring in somebody. So we had people came that were Celtic uh, Irish fiddlers. Uh, we also had uh, like uh, Irish dancers, river dance, that kind of thing. Um, we had a band that was a Bhangra band. Uh, we had First Nations um, people come in and show us um, their traditions. Uh, and one of the people that came in was a Bharatanatyam dancer, actually. Um, maybe when I was around nine, nine years old or something. What was the first um, dance performance you saw and how you were inspired? When I was nine or ten or something like that, uh, a Bharatanatyam dancer named Sudhnya Nayak came to our school and she performed like a small margam there. Um, I don't remember, like to this day, I don't know what was performed. Like, I didn't know the art form back then. I had no um, previous exposure to it. Um, but I do remember like the, the beginning piece was a Ganesha piece that they started, that she started with uh, and continued so on. Um, and it must have been an hour not altogether, right? So it's not like she did a bandam or anything like that. It was whatever she could um, do to keep the interest of small kids from the age of 5 to 12. Right. right? <laughs> but I remember seeing it and sitting with my friends and um, we were sitting there and I just looked up and I was like, I want to do that. And this was at the age of 9? Probably, yeah, I'm going to say approximately around 9. Wow. 9, 10, one of these That's ages. I don't know exactly, but yeah. yeah. And actually, like Sudhnya Ji, she's still teaching in Vancouver and I've met her, but I've never actually told her that she was the first Bharatanatyam dancer that I've seen. I don't even know, I don't think she even knows who I am, but like, I don't, I've never expressed to her that, you know, ma'am, I saw you when I was a, a child and you're the reason that I decided I want to better than I am. So, you know, it's, it's crazy how close actually knit the community is and still <laughs> I haven't come up either, but yeah, yeah that was amazing. What made you then decide to get into like Bharatanatyam um, and 
what has sustained your love for this art form? So uh, I think for me, it started with uh, Bollywood. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be an actor. Yeah. And my older sister was like, if you want to be an actor and you want to be successful, you need to know how to dance. Huh. Said, okay. Huh? And then she said, you need to be classically trained. That's the only way you'll be able to do everything. Okay. Because I, we had enough of um, an understanding that of music to know that Bollywood took aspects from many different musical and folk forms and classical forms and whatnot, right? So she's like, you have to do a classical dance, do Kathak, then you'll be able to do anything. I said, okay, cool. Nice. This must have been before the time actually I saw the Bharatanatyam because I think I had been like researching Kathak and whatever. And I said, it's nice, but I don't know if it's something I would enjoy doing personally. Then I saw Bharatanatyam and I, they said it was a classical form, one of the classical forms of India. And I said, oh, well, that looks like something I want to do. Yeah. So I'll do that. I didn't do that right away. I started in the filmy school and the semi-classical class, and I moved on to many other classes in there. Uh, I became an assistant teacher there within a two years, and then became a teacher there as well. And in the midst of all of this, the owner, Manoj Murthy, he told me, he was like, we're going to get you a Bharatanatyam teacher, but the person you need to go to is such and such person, who was, ended up being my first teacher, Monica Anti. And as for what sustained it, I can't give a concrete answer. I, it's just something that, for me, you fall in love with it and it becomes an obsession. Um, there was even a period of time where I took maybe seven years off or so, not doing better than acting at all. Yeah. But you still find your mind thinking. It, yeah, you think about it, you make justice in your head, you. You become so engrossed within the music, kinetic like music, and you find your hands always kind of itching and turning into mudras and like, <laughs> just becomes this kind of obsession. And right, right. Um, I guess also part of it having to be in the Guru Shishya relationship is there's always better to do. So you can never actually attain perfection. And if you're somebody who's meticulous and wants perfection, you'll keep going and going and going and going. And I really think that has been part of it for me. Yes and no, I, nothing was ever blatant and outright that at the moment I could point my finger and say, this is what it is. But thinking back on it, there was. so. In the dance school that I grew up in, uh, I'm talking about the filmy dance school, it was a primarily geared towards the Fijian Indian community, mm -hmm. which there is a large community um, in West Coast Canada, mm -hmm. as well as the Punjabi community. Because the dance school made its money by performing at weddings, receptions, engagements, birthday parties. The 16th birthday party is a really big thing for the North Indian community in Canada and Fijian community. 16th girls birthday party is like, a huge, huge thing. It's kind of like an engagement for the family. Um, so we used to go to all these things, but um, people would look at me and they would know that I was mixed or whatever. And there's, um, there's a term that um, Fijians use for they, their own indigenous people there. They, the, the, those people look like the Polynesian people and they have like African blood in them as well. And there's a kind of a, a, like a derogatory name they use for them. So people used to um, kind of throw that word around and call me that sometimes, which they never meant it with malice, but they also, I guess, didn't understand the connotation that comes with it or the kind of weight that is given to like a name put on somebody like yeah. that. And then smaller things like, which I can't blame anybody, like the, the uh, Indo-Canadian kids that I grew up with, they'd see me and they would know that my, my full name is Kiran Hiralal. They know I'm Indian. And they, but they'd see you and they'd be like, you don't look exactly the same as us. And then we, teacher would ask, like, what do you like? What's your favorite food? Whatever. And I'm here saying, like, oh, I like roti. I like curries and all this kind of stuff. And they're looking at me like, what? But I get it, too, because you can't blame them because they don't have any uh, exposure right. to Indians outside of India. So they had no idea, especially then that there's, like, mixed race and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So there were little things, but it mostly came with that you have to choose to explain or not uh, what that was. 
but I've never in the professional sphere really um, faced anything. I've never, I don't believe I've had any setbacks. They're actually here a lot of people, most people think I'm Tamil from Sri Lanka. Because that's the majority of the population here. Yeah. So the generation especially, they'll come and they will always speak to me in Tamil fully. Yeah, I'm good Tamil. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'll be, I'll understand a little bit, like I'll go along with it until I don't understand anymore. And then I'll say, uh, you know, <laughs> but you just said that in Tamil, I was like, <laughs> right? So, right. otherwise, it's been very welcoming. So, Good. small things have been there, a little bit, mostly due to ignorance when I was younger and people not knowing um, these things exist. But as I've definitely as I've grown older, it, ha it hasn't happened to me. And I think also because all of us are very aware of it and I'm very aware of it, if it were to happen, I think I would be very outspoken about it on the spot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so luckily I haven't. Actually, even being in Chennai, most people there think I'm a Malayali or, or a Sri Lankan Tamil. Oh yeah, interesting. have like a big circle of um, artist friends who uh, um, you know participate with you in terms of dance and music um, yeah. you have like a really good connected circle how did that how did that work for you so that is the power of social media so all of us knew of each other uh -huh. we all knew each other from Instagram usually Instagram I would post uh, uh, like little dance clips or whatever like that my friend Yarini also did the same yeah, yeah. then um, there's Sai Brinda who was the female vocalist um, she had she she Mayuran who is the male vocalist um, and Sri Parin who is the Mdilangis they are for our generation senior musicians here um, for our generation I mean so they had been doing it since childhood, like since they've known each other since they were little, they'd been in the scene since they were little, they grew up in music here. Um, so they're all well known and connected within that way. Um, so we all followed and knew each other from Instagram. The other ones were the sisters that play Veena. So I had found them on Instagram and they were playing Veena and they were doing covers of film songs, but on the Veena. So I thought it was the coolest thing, so I followed them, whatever. And, you know, he'd randomly start commenting back and forth, things like that. So. The way it all happened was I did my Arangetram under my teacher, Malani Pararaja Singham, in 2015. Um, and remember, this is 2015 when I was originally supposed to do it in 2006. Yeah. <laughs> I, a long gap, I decided, fine, I'll do it. And the reason I did it actually is not because I wanted to, because my teacher knew that dancing was something that I would carry forward. And she said to me, and I remember, I still remember, I was in the backseat of her car, we were driving somewhere. Yeah. And she just, absent, not absent-mindedly, but she said to whomever was in the car, she goes, I can't wait to see Kanna's adding each other. Mm. I looked at her, she goes, no, you're going to dance professionally, so you have to do it. And that was it. <laughs> was it, it wasn't a question of yes, no, why, where, when, all this kind of stuff. She goes, it's going to happen, you're going to do it. And then we started planning it from there. And um, so before that, my friend Yalni and I had started becoming a little bit more um, vocal on each other's Instagram posts as we'd actually like say, this is great, wow, this is beautiful, and then we'd share them and whatever, things like this, right? So now we start seeing each other at events. I was like, hi, friends, hi, we're friends, right? Can we be friends? So we would talk in person and whatever. So we'd actually gone to some, some kacheris together and stuff by this point. Um, I started creating like a little circle of friends. Then my adding HM was getting planned. For my adding HM, I said that I needed a male singer. And so then I reached out to Sai Brinda, who we knew in passing only, right? Like we weren't personal friends or anything at that point, but I asked her, um, I'm looking for a male singer. Is there anybody you can recommend? And she said, call Mayudin. So I called Mayudin. I'd seen him sing and heard him sing and I called him and he said yes for my adding HM. So he came, I asked the Vina sisters, I asked one of them to come play. But they had exams at the same time. I didn't end up having enough for my adding HM, But they still came and supported and whatnot. Um, so that was the first kind of start. Wow. So after this, um, we had a circle of dance friends. There was male dancers, female dancers, whatever. We were all friends. 
supporting each other, helping each other for kacheris, whatever. Um, a lot of them got, had gone to India for training and come back and whatnot. And um, Yalini did something. She did one sh a show with Sai Brinda and the Veena sisters, and they did their, their thing. And she said, hey, why don't you guys come one day? Why don't we all do something? We'll find a show, we'll all do something. So then we got the opportunity for this show, um, a youth society show, uh, to do something together. So we put us all together, and they said, wait, we don't have a Madungas, though. So we have two Veenas, we have two singers, we have two dancers, and no Madungas. What's happening here, right? And then um, Sabrina was like, Sabrina Mayurin, like, what was Shree He's been playing forever. He kind of took a hiatus. And um, I think he's interested in learning to play for dance. So he came. And we did um, a Bharatiyar medley. We took, we had a book of poetry, a Bharatiyar poetry that was in Tamil and English. And we picked a few that had to do with um, the seasons, set it to music, set um, choreography to it, set Solakatta to it. And I taught the Solakatta to Mayuran so he could play Natavangam. He never played Natavangam in his life. Taught, um, well, like helped um, Sri Bharan play for dance. To the point that I was like, hey, this has to be like water, okay? He's like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I was like, just watch us. Well, like, it has to be like water. Then he plays something. Like, not that. We play something like perfect. Wow. So it, we just all started learning together like this. And, um, through a stroke of luck or fate or whatever, we have become best friends. Yeah, I think it's like a really nice collaborative effort. Uh, just yeah. like you said, it's just the power of social media. Yeah, that's how it really started. But we all are family now. We yeah. talk all day, every day. In terms of my favorite performance, actually, my favorite performance, um, it's called, uh, Yeris, I'm going to butcher the name, Yerisei. It's uh, like the seven arts. Uh, is the, like the rough translation of Tamil or whatever, and uh, it's actually a play that Sai Brinda had come up with and scripted under her performing arts company called New Rim Creations. And the thing it revolved around one day at a temple, so the stage setup was of that of a temple. So we actually had a mandapam built, we had like a staircase um, that had like temple doors built, and a large printout. Um, like vinyl printout of an actual temple that filled the entire, like it covered the entire um, cyclorama of the theater. Thanks. With a cutout in the back that we put the Nadaraja and all that kind of stuff in there. And then it had a platform in the middle as well. So we built this entire um, temple, all her students. So this, it was jointly the, the first ever annual show for her students, as well as a Carnatic musical. Everybody had characters. So in this, I was the dance teacher. So there's a part where, um, in the beginning, it starts with a malla. Oh no, it starts with Devarams in the beginning, where the kids are reciting Devarams and all this. And then Yani was playing with the school, the teacher. And so she would ask them questions about the Devarams and about the Ragams and these kind of things, because it had to be a very um, educational thing uh, on music. So they went back and forth about this. Then the Mallari happened. So we actually had. Um, the senior most Nadaswaram player in Toronto and his son played Nadaswaram. We had a tabu player and then instruments, talk about them as well. And the guys, they came in holding the player on the theater or whatever. And Yali and I danced and let it out and did this. And that was how the opening was. Nice. Before, there was a Mangal essay in the beginning too, so just Nadaswaram. Um, that's how she commenced that with just the daily things going around the temple where the teacher she goes okay you guys practice your riyaz so i'm going to go around the temple and in riyaz they would sing some film songs and then when they came back they would realize the film song was like the film song was based on canada raga or something so they would like the kids would turn it into the raga and she'd come back and she's like what are you doing right so it turned it was very educational yeah. it's very true of how kids learn today they recognize things from what's popular, right? I was the dance teacher, so there's a point where the girls are singing, the two senior most girls, and I'm waiting for the dance class, and they come and I ask why they're late, so they start dancing, and I say, okay, you're not concentrating, so today you learn how to sing for dance. And so I get up and I make them sit beside with the orchestra, and I dance. 
uh, in this little mandapam. But it was so beautiful because all of my uh, friends were around me. Uh, they're all musicians. Yeah. And younger artists were singing for the first time for dance ever. And it was just, it was great. It was also my birthday. So my birthday and the senior most novice one artist, same day, uh, June 27th. So we celebrated our birthday there as well. Uh, experience. Um, and then you, so you asked about choreography. At the same time that we were practicing for this, I had gotten a grant and all these things, and I did a show three days later, on the 30th of June. And this was called Darshan. Darshan? Darshan, yeah. Okay. And it was a margam, top to bottom, uh, all of my choreography, and it was six dancers, so three male dancers, three female dancers, and then seven musicians. So all my same friends who were in the same show that we were doing also did that. And uh, one senior artist came and did Natuangam for us as well, uh, Kalimatiaka. And so that, I don't have like a one piece of mine that's my favorite choreography. I'll just say Darshan because it was such just, the way it felt, I, I didn't plan on doing an entire Margam. I ended up choreographing the entire Margam. Honestly, think anybody that's doing this full time, making a living, and even making a name for themselves is a role model, whether regardless if I know them or not. Um, that's something to me that I'm. It's not easy to do. So to do it, to do it well, to carry yourself with pride and whatever, I feel like that's a role model. But if you look at it, say, back when I was in Vancouver, yeah. uh, Michaeli Prakash was somebody that to look up to because. She went on a North American um, television show and did Bharatanatyam without diluting it. Yeah, yeah. And beautifully, like what a beautiful dancer. So seeing Michael, Michael Lee Prakash and then that's really when I was like, oh, I can do this in the terms of I was a North American dancer and I thought that Vancouver was the beginning and end for me. I didn't even think I could go to India at some point yeah. and learn. I didn't think that somebody, I could have a solo concert and people would pay to come and watch it. None of those things registered in my mind until I saw someone like Mike Lee dancing. Um, and then, of course, there's a lot of senior artists. My gurus, uh, like Shijit Sir, is just uh, such an icon for me. Uh, Leela Sampson, Leelaka, and I had the privilege of working under her for Spanda. For, I danced in Nadi uh, to Canada for a couple shows. So getting to learn her choreography from her directly and in such a fast pace and nothing was left behind. Like it wasn't like, oh, just do this and, and move on. She would make you learn it quickly. You, I was learning like five, six items at the same time. Right. Because I we only had a few days of rehearsal before the show. But everything was so in depth still yeah. that it was like it was as if I had been learning it for a year. The, the amount of knowledge that was like put right. into it. Oh, especially many uh, senior artists, like so many people when I went to Chennai and I was living there, like uh, being around Bali Gopal and Sir and um, the senior Kalakshatriyans and cousin Kalakshat for a lot actually. Yeah. Um, meeting uh, uh, and Jain and Shantaka and just being around them and just getting to speak with them and uh, Malavika Sarukai watching her perform um, so many like I can't even I really can't name but there's a lot of people too within my generation who I also just think are fantastic people and performers and artists and dancers so it's kind of an endless list for me <laughs>
being in wildlife. I love traveling. I love being in like trees and forests and rivers. And I mean, we were almost eaten by a bear once trying to get uh, <laughs> to a waterfall. But uh, you know, so like I I like those kind of things. Wow. Uh, yeah. No, I had to jump in a river because there was a bear. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 In Vancouver. Yeah. Um, but I made it. I'm here. <laughs> um, those things. Um, specific art forms themselves too. So I love Kerala. So anytime I see Kudi Atam, uh, Kathakali, Mohini Atam, these sort of things, I'm so entranced and everything that they do, I want to do. And I'm like, how can I make that better than Atim? How can I, you know, fabric, uh, like sarees, drapes, weaves, those sort of things. Those things actually really influence me. Um, like when I, I did a Tri Devi um, Stotram that I had choreographed, and actually a lot of it started from seeing saris. Mm -hmm. And like, this reminds me of Parvati, this reminds me of Lakshmi, this reminds me of Saraswati. How can I get these and use them in something? What would, how can I have these and do justice to the sari? Okay. And, and that's how it starts. So I get it kind of just from all over and I could never pick one thing that gives me inspiration. The other thing is books. Just, I, I like to read and I don't give myself enough time to read anymore, like I used to. Um, and I think the big thing was that I used to transit so much to go to work in rehearsals. Like to go to work would take an hour and a half, to go to rehearsal from work would take three hours. So I would read a lot. Nice. I would get a lot of inspiration that way too. So. Oh, very good. When you... Actually, the yeah. last thing I like doing too is I love historical anything. So National Cultural Archives or any of the art, Sangeet Natak Academy, like archives of watching old dancers yeah. um, cool. from 60s, even listening to recordings of Kalakshetra from the 50s, Ramayanam from the 50s in um, Pasupati Sir and Kamlarani's voices. Yeah. I could do that endlessly. Wow. And it will, it will always stimulate me to want to create something. That is quite fascinating. Yeah. question I wanted to ask you was when was the last time you actually saw a performance uh, or, or any artwork and you were left like speechless it could be any art medium one was watching Kapilaka Kapila Venu Kuriyatam artist in um, Chennai during season uh, season when was I there 2018-19 and she did Prahlada Charitram and all I can say is I cried and it wasn't just me crying everybody I was with all of us when the lights came up we hit our faces because like we were ugly crying like that's how emotionally involved we've got did I say evolved or involved involved I hope I said <laughs> um, but hopefully also evolved from the performance I don't know uh, but it was absolutely breathtaking um, the other thing is uh, <laughs> there's a home show is a show called the world's most extraordinary homes on netflix, netflix? And, yeah and it will go each episode will go by country and they'll just go to these amazing houses and there is a home in i believe the old city of jerusalem and it was um an ancestral home like the the generations had lived on it before and they went up to this lot and I remember just sitting there staring at the screen and just my jaw dropped at how beautiful it was. And it was simple, but like the fact that there was an old home on the property that was the grandfather's house made of these giant stones. And instead of removing the house, they dismantled all the stones and used it to build a garden. So they built this archway into a garden that had like fig and pomegranate trees and all of these sort of things. And then they had the newer house constructed and it just was such a beautiful, beautiful space. And of course, in the Middle East, they're always trying to uh, recreate paradise with their gardens. So they had different levels of the gardens. And I just sat there and I think I've watched that episode like three, four times. Just to watch specific specifically that house. My dream project. I would love to... I would love to choreograph and 
be creative director for a film on yeah on by the Matthew. um with a huge budget <laughs> um i think that would be my dream and then i would also like to maybe somehow get that film turned into like a broadway show nice so who would you cast as your as your main characters um and why Mm-hmm. And you can let me say that if you had to choose any artist um let's say alive or dead who would you choose Oh man okay so now I'm trying to think what kind of movie okay so I think the movie is going to be like a period piece it's going to take place in like some court like a uh, traveling court kingdom or maybe a made up one to like reflect what like the devadas the rajadas is that kind of thing at that time that community was doing and so I think I'd have a mix of top dancers and then actors as well because we need the money to come in right so i think for like senior senior artists i would choose vijay kumara and rekha ah. so they would be like the seniors who like would only ever really show you some abhinaya but be like senior members of the community and then for senior dancers that will actually do more of the demonstration there that's when i would ask like I would cast uh VPD sir Shantak uh uh Brega Basel Brega teacher um like these kind of names um and then for uh the generation down like the younger generation uh Deepika and Priyanka have to be there okay they have to be there doing something okay and then the dancers There's a lot of dancers I could choose. I could say like um uh Satya, I could say Radhe, I could say uh Chris, I could say Malika Prithvija, like there's so many dancers that like could be the ones who are doing the like the meat portion, the bulk of it of the actual dancing and what not. Uh yeah, something like that. A good mix of these like top actors from yesteryears and now. I didn't choose a dead artist. I have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was just random. <laughs> so random. So, no, but I would definitely buy a ticket for your movie for sure. Uh, first day for show. happy you asked that actually this is one thing that my answer never changes to this is that i think we need to get it into the schools um it has to be something that somehow every single school in the school system has to somehow bring artists from many different not just better than that many different backgrounds to expose the kids to like they did when i was younger like how i saw sudhya ji come when i was 8 9 10 however old i was If not for that I probably would not have been exposed for a very long time. Actually never exposed again um outside of me actually going to functions where I was already dancing like with filmy and stuff but if I hadn't got into it I wouldn't have been in these places. Um so I think a lot of people were, are not going to see it unless it's brought to them directly. And unless we bring it to them directly we also won't cultivate an audience that is appreciative that is hungry for it that is inquisitive. Um one of my best friends from back home used to come to every adding HM that I could find when I was in Vancouver. She's a uh, Filipino descent. I'd bring her to everything because she wanted to see. She goes, "This is so beautiful. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see." And if it wasn't for me saying, "Hey, come to this adding, like come to this thing," she would not have also been um exposed. So, I think what happens a lot with the I think it's unknowingly with the Indian classical art field is that we kind of want to keep it to ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Even though we talk about we want to diversify whatever, when people are diversifying, some people are like, "Well, why are you doing that?" And I think the I think it's always kind of the default is to try and hold on to it where it's like, "No, I think we should really put it out there without actually tampering or diluting the form." It's not saying that you have to go create things that are completely contemporary and no longer you can't call it better than that anymore. Keeping its true form and just being able to take it and showcase it 
at these things. So that's why with me getting this offer, this call to do a Pride Festival or to do anything like that, I'm so happy and thrilled to go and do something like that because these are a lot of people that would not have been exposed to this art form uh, otherwise. Yeah. And there's so much beauty to be taken from it because if you think of our classical arts, it's such a repository of Indian history in terms of the just the garments that are being worn, the type of weave that's being worn, the type of art form it takes to string flowers to put in their hair, yeah. the physical dance itself, the music, the style of music, um, the introduction of certain instruments, whatever. Like it's such a timeline being um, showcased in this one compact thing. It could be a five minute performance, but you have thousands of years of history in this thing, right? Yeah. And so they don't know this, they don't see this otherwise. Um, so that's why I think, and it, it has to, we have to be going out to schools and started started when when they are young, right? Introduce yeah. them when they're young. Very yeah. important. Their mind is such a sponge at that age, and they'll they people instinctively know what's beautiful and what's not beautiful, or what's quote unquote favorable, unfavorable, good, bad, whatever. So if you expose them to art of all forms from when they're young, they're going to benefit from it. Well, with that, I think we come to an end with the with the conversation with the questions. Uh, I would like to say a big thank you um, for your time uh, to spend uh, with the Plano Garajas project. Uh, thank you so so much.